So have you ever needed extra sockets behind your TV? Or if you like me, wish that your TV would have one of these socket outlets built into the TV so you could actually plug an auxiliary device straight into the back of your TV? Well, in this video, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to make an auxiliary socket directly built into the TV. Now, if you're like me, you really hate wires hanging down, down the TV. And um, I like to have my TV flash mounted on the wall with no wires sticking out everywhere. And that's difficult if you don't have enough sockets to plug your devices in. So my TV has this rather curious, what looks like a power socket at the back of it. But it turns out it's not actually a socket outlet at all. It's when you buy the TV, they store the socket in there to keep it out of the way when it's boxed up. But I was wondering, could this be turned into a socket so you can plug an auxiliary device in behind your TV so you don't need extra sockets? So that the TV is powered from this socket and your auxiliary device can be plugged in here. But this is not a real socket, it's just a dummy. But there's no reason why we couldn't put this behind here, this uh, socket, and power it from the TV's internal mains power. And then our auxiliary point can work and we can power things our extra these days you plug various things um, into the into your TV and you always need uh, socket outlets and um, it's extra cables that's really messy and untidy so if everything plugs in behind the TV um, you only have one cable that plugs into the wall so let's see if this is possible let's crack the TV open Right, so I've undone all the screws, so let's pull the back of the TV off. Alright, so there's the TV, there's not much inside. And here is our fake socket that uh, that plug plugs into so if we get rid of these plastic things and just mount, mount this behind there we got ourselves a power point built into the TV now if we could of course be very clever and um, make it so with a relay that when the TV turns off it cuts the power but we might want something that needs a permanent power feed so we'll make it permanent live. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a hacksaw to these plastic bits and chop them off and file them down nicely so that uh, this can be mounted on top of that. So our socket plug can fit straight in there. So there we go. So I've now added a bit of flex to it, terminated into this little socket connector. So it's ready to be attached to the back of that. So there you go, we have now mounted the socket. We just have to check the clearance. I think we're fine for clearance because uh, there's uh, a bit of distance behind the socket before it uh, will touch anything. But um, let's check the other side. Now we have a working socket that we can plug an auxiliary device in. So now it's just a matter of
getting the business end connected possibly there where the power main power comes in there we can just connect onto there right so we've made our connection I've soldered onto these pins here so this is now powered from this socket and it's also governed by this fuse since in the UK the plugs have their own fuses in it so it's a 3M fuse so this socket here is limited by that 3M fuse but in general the type of appliances you would plug in here would draw an amp a fraction of an amp so that 3M fuse is just fine it means we don't have to include any other fuse on this circuit here now all we need to do is maybe possibly put some shrouding over here it's maybe not necessary just in case this case of the TV is a bit flexible if you press really hard and the case bends in it might touch some of the circuitry in here I don't think it does but we'll put we'll put something on the top of here just in case and possibly some insulation even though I don't think it's necessary because obviously the TV is enclosed and there's plenty of live parts inside anyway so to summarize I used to have a dummy socket here which only purpose it has was to to store or park the socket for when you buy the TV it's temporarily parked there stored there I decided to turn it into a real socket which is powered by the socket so there's less sockets behind your TV and your TV is clean no trailing cables the reason I did this is because my Amazon Fire TV stick was plugged into the HDMI port of the TV um, and I powered it from the TV's own USB port um, but that gave me problems it wasn't quite up to the job and the Amazon recommends you use the Amazon charger I'm using an iPhone charger now it recommends uses the Amazon USB charger and um, it does actually work better it's more stable with that so um, that way I can have the Amazon charger or a USB charger plugged in there providing more stable power for my Amazon Fire TV stick and in future I can power, power something else from there and it's, uh, I like my, my devices to be I like the TV to be um, flush on the wall with no trailing cables so any sockets um, behind the TV is welcome so one built into the TV is even better I don't know how many uh, TVs have this uh, parking socket, um, storage socket for this for this thing. Um, it's the first time I've seen it on a TV, but it was a good opportunity to convert it into an actual usable socket outlet. And I think TVs should have them because they're incredibly useful. Because we always need to power stuff up behind our TV. I mean, most stuff is USB powered now. But this TV USB port is not quite powerful enough. And plus it will keep on rebooting the fire stick each time you turn the TV on and off. And I don't think it's good for that. At least now it gets good stable power. So let's give it a test. So even if your TV doesn't have this uh, dummy socket thing at the back of the TV that I built a socket into, you could probably still make the holes yourself and put a socket um, behind the TV as an auxiliary power socket. You just have to make sure there's enough clearance inside the TV to fit the socket inside the TV. Uh, this is an older style TV, so there's a, there's a lot of empty space to fit a socket inside. But some of the newer ones are quite thin and it might not fit. So anyway, guys, don't forget to smash that like button. And uh, if you already haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so now. That way you get to see more of these videos if you like them. And uh, share them with your mates if uh, you think they'd be interested. Uh, I really appreciate if you do this uh, one little thing for me. It really motivates me to make these videos. They take a lot of time. And uh, that way we can all learn something. I would like to build this channel into sort of a hackers makers community. Where we can share ideas and you guys leave some comments and maybe I can make videos about them. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.